good evening to everyone. Let us stand, let us all stand. Welcome to our Wednesday night prayer and Bible study. We just want to say welcome to those who will be joining online. Hallelujah. We just like to sing another song. Come, let us worship and bow down. Father, as we come here, God, Father, to worship, we want to receive from you this evening. We give thanks. 
当时因我做一个固定法，可能都是革命有了哈，我们的 mindset 不管对西方。Let us come in one accord and believe in one God. Let us walk in one step to the same God. Let us walk our fellow God on a new and praise and new Lord. Father, we thank you, God, that each one who are here with the comfort of you bless them. You give them travel and move forward. You watch over them, Father. We give thanks to you for all that you have done for us. And bless those who, Father God, who come before you this evening and come with a open heart, come to surrender to you, Father. Give them, O God, the wisdom and the knowledge, Father. Help them to open their hearts, open their mind, open their understanding to receive from you this evening. Father, you let your Holy Spirit just take control of your souls this evening. As we pray, we ask you this, Father. Open everything to us, God. And give you thanks and praise and honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As we continue in the atmosphere of praise and worship, we just have to sing another song. Lord, we proclaim you now.
be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, the thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much. Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth the fruit. And this is a confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hears us, Whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of Him. Thanks be to God for His will.
she has placed her faith and hope and trust in Jesus Christ and she's still standing today because of the confidence that she has placed Amen. in the Lord.
saints this evening. Greetings in Jesus' name. We welcome you to our power hour. We are glad that you have chosen to be in the house and have chosen to be online as well. And we are shouting out to, to some of our viewers right now. Mary Padra, we trust that you are doing better. I've been much in prayer for you, Sister Mary. God bless you so much. May grace and strength be yours. And also to Rodney Ganesa and his family. Also to Joyce and Tisha Mahis. They are also of God and from Guyana. Uh, we have Sibran and her family. Uh, we want to encourage you to send in your prayer request right now. Very shortly, we will be praying for you. Send it in in faith and in trusting in the Lord and see what God is going to do. We're turning in our Bibles for tonight's uh, study and uh, it's coming from the book of, of Matthew's Gospel. So having your Bibles, I invite you to turn there and to and read with me God's Word, Matthew's chapter 26. Reading verses 36 through verses 46. A tremendous, tremendous passage of Scripture. If you are there by now, could I just hear an amen across the auditorium? Amen. Wonderful. Kindly read with me, please. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and say unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter, and the two sons of Zebedee began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then said he unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Carry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little farther and fell on his face, and prayed, saying, O my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he coming unto his disciples, and he findeth them asleep, and said unto Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And he went away again the second time, and prayed, saying, O my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came, and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them, and went away again, and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then come he to his disciples, and say unto them, Sleep or no, and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going, before he is at hand, that doth be free uh, we have been speaking on the subject, man's defining moment. Would you bow with me kindly in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the prayer warriors that have showed up in the house. Those are not on right now online. And we thank you for an excellent time of praise and worship unto our God. And as we have come, dear Lord, to our study, we do ask for understanding. We do ask, dear Lord, that you would bless us. Dear Father, the message as it goes uh, forth, and we would be encouraged in all things, uh, dear Father, and even as we go to God uh, in our time of prayer, from my mighty move of the Lord in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Please uh, uh, be, be seated. Praise the Lord. There was a, a young a woman, and so she brought home her fiancé uh, to make her parents. So after the her mother tells her uh, father, I want you to find out uh, more about this uh, young man here. And so the father invites the young man uh, to his study to have a, you know, a, a talk. And so he asked the young man, he said, young man, uh, you are interested in my daughter, but I must ask you, um, what are your plans? And so he replies, well, I am a Bible scholar. A Bible scholar, the father said, hmm, wow, that is uh, admirable. But uh, tell me something, son, what are you going to do 
to provide for my daughter such as uh, a nice house as you can see she is accustomed to. And so the young man replied and said, I'll tell you what, uh, I will study and God will provide for us. Yeah. So the father said, well, how would you buy then a nice beautiful engagement ring uh, such as my daughter deserves? Uh, the young man said to uh, her father, I will, I will concentrate on my studies. Yes, and God will provide for us. And so the father asked him, well, what about uh, our children? If you have children, how are you going to support uh, my grandchildren? And he said, sir, you don't worry at all because my God will provide. Well, the conversation proceeds like that. Every day he responds, my God will provide. Each time the father asks him a question, this is what the young idealist would uh, reply. So later, after that conversation in the study, uh, the mother now asks uh, the father, he says, well, uh, tell me, honey, um, how did things go, the talk that you had with, uh, with the young man? But the father says, I have some bad news and I have some good news about the whole conversation. The bad news is, is that uh, he got no job and he got no plans, neither for life. But the good news, he thinks that I am God. Because he keeps saying, God will provide. <laughs> oh, God. Well, there are two things that we have been looking at so far from this past scripture. We are learning how Jesus faced his Gethsemane. Number one, how did he face it? With prayer. Keep that in mind, somebody. Hallelujah. He faced uh, this time of testing in prayer. And so there we learn a very important thing tonight. Everything that comes your way, face it in prayer. Glory to God. Simple as that, my friend. Invite God into your circumstance. Invite God into your troubles, into your situations, into your life. Always pray. Remember what I told you some time ago? Prayer should never be the last thing that we do, the last thing that we try. It should never be the last thing that we grab onto. Never, never at all. But it must be first. Prayer is not a matter of something that is in the back burner. No, my friend. It ought to be in the front. Jesus, throughout uh, his ministry, you would see him praying again and again before every decision, before every work, before every job. In fact, uh, as he initiated uh, his uh, ministry, his public ministry, 40 days and 40 nights, he was there fasting in the wilderness. And he continued in prayer. He faced every temptation. Yes, even in selecting the disciples. The Bible says that he was much in prayer for this very special selection. So we learn that Jesus faced his Gethsemane in prayer. The second thing that we learn from our text is that you must surrender yourself to the will of God. What did Jesus say in verses 39? As he prayed, he said, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. Now this is so important for us to understand because a lot of people are having some trouble when it comes to surrendering their wills to God. Because this will does not want to surrender. From the very beginning, you will see that, that man decided to do his own thing. Throughout human history, we see that man continues to, uh, to come against the leading and the direction of the Spirit of God and wants to do whatever he wants to do. So this is so important. If we are to experience the power, the anointing of God in our lives and to see breakthroughs, then we must learn to surrender our wills to the Lord. It is said that there are two great days in a person's life. Number one, the day we are born. It is a wonderful day. We all look forward to celebrating our birthdays. Mine is coming up in October. My young friend here, he jumped in the bus um, uh, just a little while ago and he stepped in the front seat. 
And so I said, just tell me again, what is your name? And he said, is it Adrian? Adrian is his name. And I said, how old are you, my son? And he said, nine. I said, when you're looking like you're 10. He said, matter of fact, Pastor, I'm going to be on 21st of this month. But I'm going to be 10 years. And I know that boy is looking forward and celebrating his 10th birthday. Glory to God. That's a great day. Yes, that's why we celebrate our birthdays. We acknowledge that, that something great happened and that we were born. I am glad that I am born. Amen. That God brought me into the world. Because my friend, if that did not happen, I tell you, I would have missed out on all of, of these wonderful things that God has done throughout my lifetime. And I think that the best is yet to come. Don't you deny the Lord your God? God has just begun to pour His blessings upon you and upon your life. Listen, it's going to get better for the child of God. It's not going to be better for the people of this world. I can assure you that I'm not ready. It's not. It's certainly not. But for the child of God, it is only going to get better. So hold on. Glory to God. Praise Him in your pain. Amen. Give Him glory in your persecution. Rejoice in your trials. Hallelujah. Because it's only for a short time. We will be all here. Amen. Hallelujah. The trumpet of God will sound any time. Glory to God. The dead in Christ will rise from the dead. Those of us who remain unto the coming of the Lord, the Bible says, we will be snatched. We will be caught away. Oh, what a day it is going to be. But the second great day in our lives is not only the day we were born, but it is the day that we discovered why we were born. Hallelujah. That is a great day as well. When you come to the place and discover your purpose in life, we do have a purpose, my friend. We are not here to occupy space. I am not here to occupy space. When God brought me into this world, there was a reason why. Amen. Amen. Otherwise, God would not bring me into this world. He brought you into this world because there is a specific purpose for your life. You are absolutely needed tonight. If you were needed, you would not have been born, my friend. For every person, the 8.7.9 billion persons upon the face of it, there is a purpose for each man, woman, boy, and girl. Regardless to your nationality, regardless to your position, your status in life, there is a definite purpose, and only you and you alone can fulfill that purpose as you surrender yourself to the will of God. Listen, you cannot fulfill your purpose in life without surrendering to God. It is impossible. It will never, never, never happen. Your purpose in life, uh, you will discover, begins when you kneel at that altar and you say yes uh, to Jesus Christ. We will praise tonight a lot. Hallelujah. When you say yes, I want my sins to be forgiven. Hallelujah. Now you're beginning to discover your true purpose and the true meaning in life. That, my friends, and only that, should be the greatest desire of our hearts. Amen. Amen. To know why I am born. To know why that God called me into this world. That should be your quest. More than pursuing money. More yeah. than pursuing wealth. More than pursuing this world. is a quest yeah. to find out what is my specific purpose in life. Otherwise, you can miss it all, my friend. You might find yourself with a million dollars in the bank. And yet your life has been without the true purpose that God had made you. I mean, this is going to be so disappointing in eternity. So that should be the greatest desire of your heart. God, reveal to me your will. I want to know your will. Praise God. For me. Amen. Hallelujah. And so to know and to do his will should be your ultimate quest in life. To know it, number one, what it is, and secondly, to do it must 
be together. It is like the both sides of a coin, the two sides of a coin, or a dollar, to make it genuine. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Knowing God's will and then doing God's will. Some people know God's will. They know what God has called them to do. But they refuse to know that God has called them to repentance. And this is the first will of God for every man to repent. People know they should repent. They know they should turn to God. And yet they resist it as long as possible. They want to spend their whole life living for the world. And for the pleasures of this world. And they say, when I am old and gray and tired, yes, and about to resign, then uh, I will do God's will. But my friend, you are playing Russian roulette with your soul, my friend. Because you don't know when you are going to slip away from this world. You don't know when you are going to pass um, and the Bible warns, he that is often being corrected. In fact, the King James says, um, often being reproved, uh, will suddenly be cut off. Uh, and the Bible says, that person that often hears the voice of God speaking to them, repent, repent. And they continue to harden their neck, uh, to be stubborn as a mule, as a donkey. In other words, uh, the Bible says, sudden destruction comes upon them. In other words, there will be not even a moment uh, uh, to repent. Uh, that means like the thief on the cross uh, who was dying in his final moment. Uh, he was still able to say, Lord Jesus, uh, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he was saved uh, just in the nick of time. But people who are often corrected of their sin and their shame, their immoralities, yes, and their idolatries and their rebellion. Often they are reproved about it, but they continue like a stubborn mule. No, I refuse to surrender myself, to submit myself to the will of God. The Bible says they risk, yes, their soul suddenly being taken. There are people every day in the world experience sudden death. I know that we have some games of all that, sudden, sudden death, all right? And they don't even have a chance in that vehicle, that, that maximum. And right away, bam, there is an accident, and immediately your life is snuffed out. You did not even see it coming. You did not see death coming. You were not in a hospital bed there for a day or for, or for a month. And are going through, a, you know, a pain. And the doctors are saying you might, you might not make it. No, you did not have the privilege of that. Because why? Because you continue to spurn the love of God. You continue to harden your heart and will not submit. George W. Trump said one time, and these are very profound words I share with you. He says, to know the will of God is the greatest knowledge. But to do the will of God is the greatest achievement. And I want to stand by him with those words tonight. I hope you would stand as well. Because I tell you, it is dead on target. The greatest accomplishment in your life it's not to, to be the, the manager of a company. It is not to be the president even of a country or the prime minister of a country, my friend. No, that is not the greatest achievement. The greatest achievement is not to conquer the highest mountain. The greatest achievement is not to win the gold in the Olympics, my friend. No, the greatest achievement is not the accolades that we, you know, gather throughout our lifetimes. No, the greatest accomplishment is not uh, you building the biggest mansion that there is on, or driving an OD, or a, or a expensive vehicle, a million dollar vehicle. That is not the greatest achievement. The greatest achievement is not passing all your subjects and you are have made ones or, or they have this you are distinguishments. No, that is not your greatest achievement. It's not passing to the school of your number one choice. It's not your greatest achievement. It is a great achievement, but it is not your greatest achievement, my friend. Because you can have all those things. You can pass for your school 
school of choice. You can ace every subject. You can have distinction after distinction after distinction. Hello, somebody. And yet, in the eyes of God, you have not at all accomplished the greatest achievement in your life. The greatest achievement again. Hallelujah. The greatest knowledge is to know the will of God. The greatest achievement is to do the will of God. I love that. Praise God. And hallelujah. You know, Jesus is the epitome of this in every essence of the word. Because there is literally no greater example to be compared than our Lord Jesus. He is the ultimate example. And if you are looking for a a good example, a, the best example, I submit to you, Jesus Christ, praise God. And those that follow the Lord are great examples as, as well to amen. Anybody that follow Jesus, truly for the Lord, you have no problem, you can follow them. You will never go wrong. As long as that man, that woman, is truly following Christ, um, and is not selfish, um, and is not self-ambitious, um, but all that they are living for is to do the will of God. There is no self-praise in their ministry or in their life at all. No, they are humble. They give God praise and give God glory. Amen. They are not seeking to build a personal empire for themselves. I tell you, if a man and a woman is truly following God, then you have no fear. Follow them. The Apostle Paul says in Ephesians 5, 1, he said, Be ye followers of me, even as I am of God. Amen, somebody? So Jesus is the epitome. Amen. Hallelujah. When it comes up to doing the will of God, not only to knowing, but to doing the will of God, then he is our chief example. Because he knew what God's will was for him. Coming now to the end of the earthly ministry. Seeing in the Garden of Gethsemane as our text. We have just read our text. He knows very well what awaits him. What is a front of him. He knows every detail of the pains that he will go through. And the agony that he was going to go through. No mortal man could go through what the Lord did and survive. No, my friend, that is why God sent Jesus Christ. That's why heaven came to earth. Praise oh. God. Amen. Because no one else could have done what Christ Amen. did. And so knowing fully well, what did Jesus do? He said, not my will, but thy will be done. He surrendered to something that was totally unpleasant. He surrendered to something that was painful. He surrendered to something that was gruesome, something that was shameful, something that would belittle him. Yes, sir. Something that was a total disgrace. I've told you before, no Roman citizen was ever crucified. It was not allowed at all. Being a citizen of Rome, you will never find a citizen on that cross. It was for those who rebelled against the authority of Rome. It was for murderers and hardcore criminals. That suffered the death of thousands, the streets were lined up. It was a common sight during the time of Jesus, where people were crucified, thousands of them. Rome showed their power and said, Defy me, and this is the price that you are going to pay. Yes, son. And Jesus could have chosen to be born in any time of human history. You've got to understand that. But why did he chose such a time? When Rome here yeah, will do their worst um, to suffer uh, people to this kind of, of death, uh, horrible death, painful, shameful death. Uh, Jesus came in, in the time that the suffering, uh, yes, was great because what? Because sin was greater. There need to be a great price to pay for sin, my friend. Uh, and Jesus surrendered uh, himself to the unpleasantness uh, of uh, Calvary and he said, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. That's why I'm saying that Jesus is the epitome, yes, sir, of being selfless. Amen. If we could only, my friend, reach to that point and understand, uh, hallelujah, we will never see glory for ourselves, no matter how talented you are today. 
No matter how rich you are, wealthy you are, how educated you are, or what you drive, what you own, my friend, if you understand this, glory to God, that Jesus chose, uh, yes, uh, a shameful death. Uh, he surrendered himself, uh, yes, to the scourging, to the spinning, to the buffeting, uh, mm -hmm. and the agony of the crucifixion, my friend. Because why? Because Jesus uh, determined that he was going to do the will of God. He knew why he came. And when the time came for him to exercise that knowledge, he did not deter at all. No, he did not run away. He stood. He was steadfast. He was strong. He was unmovable. Hallelujah, glory to God. He will not turn to the right. He will not turn to the left. He said, Calvary is God's will. It is the Father's will that I suffer this punishment and this agony. And so I will face Calvary. I will take on the, sh the sin, the shame. Yes, sir. I will do it. Because why? Because it is uh, the will of God. So once we know his will, what we need now to do is simple. It is as simple as I can put it. If you know God's will, then surrender to his will. Amen. Surrender and says, Lord, I am ready to do your will. Here am I, Lord. Remember Saul of Tarsus when he was going to apprehend those Christians at Damascus? Yes, the Bible tells us that the Lord appeared to him in the middle of the day. A light shone that was greater than the sun itself. It was the Son of God, Jesus Christ, in his glory. And a voice came to Saul. And as he, and he was struck down to the ground because of that blinding light. And the voice said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He said, who are you, Lord? The Lord told him, yes, that I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. And so he surrendered himself and he said, Lord, what will you have me to do? Amen. That was the turning point of this murderer. That was the turning point of this hater. That was the turning point of this man that resolved that I will annihilate Jerusalem. Yes, and the surrounding areas of all those Christians, all those fanatics, I will wipe them all personally. I will take them out and I will bring them come. I will drag them if I have to. Drag them on their bare ground and bring them there. Rip their skin, yes, apart. I'll bring them and put them into prison. Oh, he has such a hatred for Christ. But God saw beyond the hatred. God saw beyond the malice. He saw beyond all of the external things of this man. This man was hungry for God. He wanted to know the truth. And he was bound about Jesus. Every time he heard about Jesus, he was convicted. He was angry. He was upset. Because why? He was being convicted. If somebody is giving you a hard time about Jesus, listen. They are prime candidate for salvation, my friend. Don't ever, ever turn your back on those people. My father was one of those. Because when I got converted uh, from Hinduism at the age of 10, I began to pray regularly for my parents that they too will come to faith in Christ. My father will go. There was one pipe stand out there about a little over a quarter mile from the church here, out on the uh, top of the road. There was one pipe stand in the whole community. And so many of the villagers, we would come out there and we would bathe right there. And we would, they would wash the clothes right there. They would wash their cars right there. We would fill water and to take it back home. And I can remember those days uh, that my father would, would come at that standpipe and he would have his load up in which he will do his prayers and so on. And he will be shining that lotus there and right there. Why is that the, the, the Christian that was living in, in the village there that come over? Oh, I tell you, he was giving them such a hard time. But I tell you, glory to God, the day came that God arrested his life. And if you ever know anything about my father, for those of you who still remember him, praise God. One of the greatest witnesses in Trinidad and Tobago, a greater preacher than me by far, my friend, was my father, glory to God. Amen. He had been instrumental in leading hundreds and hundreds of people 
uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, a bold witness that I've never seen upon planet Earth was my father. Glory to God. There was no shame whatsoever in presenting the gospel of Christ. Uh, he gave away tens of thousands of tracts. Um, all the marketplaces and what is going about, he's preaching. Uh, and it is amazing glory to God. Hallelujah. But he was the one that, that opposed the gospel of Christ. So I'm saying to you, if somebody is opposing you right now and giving you a hard time, be much in prayer. Don't give up. They are prime candidates for salvation. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen, somebody. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. And so stand firm. God loves us and God loves you in closing tonight more than you really know. And more than Amen. you even love yourself, my friend. Amen. It is the love of God. Amen. And God knows the possibilities in your life. Amen. And God knows the successes in your life because He created you. And He put within you such tremendous ability and such tremendous talent. Folks, you're only just to discover it only when you come to the foot of the cross. Amen. It is there you begin to discover success. It is there true success starts. I say that true success does not start in university. It does not start in our school system that we hear. It does not start in parliament, my friend. I want you to understand that. It does not start in any such political party that you might affiliate yourself with. Come on, somebody. True success does not have to start with whether you are a citizen of this country or a citizen of that country, my friend. No. True success starts at the foot of the cross. When you surrender to God, you now, amen, unleash your true potential, the true possibilities, and the abilities, the reason why God has created you for. For those of you who are trusted in Christ, I want you to understand, inside of you tonight, there are so, there's so much of potential. You are only just beginning to discover it. But you must be faithful to God. Amen. You must be humble. Do not let pride come and short circuit that. Amen. And mess you up. You got to keep sin out of your heart. Amen. Keep sin. Avoid yielding to temptation. But most importantly, amen. Like Jesus. Not my will, but thy will be done. I tell you, church, if you can come to this place and you can surrender your will to God. You will be the greatest testimony and dynamite and impact for Jesus. Trinidad is yet to discover, amen, who God is to a totally surrendered child of God. Would you be that person tonight? Bow with me and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this awesome message coming from man's defining moment. Hallelujah. It was his defining moment in Gethsemane, but it's somebody finding moment right now. Right now as they are online and as they are in the house. Because their Lord, in front of them, is a world of possibilities and success as never experienced before. Glory to God. Greatness is staring someone right now in the face. Smack middle in the face. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If they would surrender their wills to God. For the Christian, he is only just beginning to discover and unleash the potential that lies within him if he would only surrender like Christ did. Dear Father, I pray that there would be that kind of a surrender. As I sing a stanza of all to Jesus, I surrender. Why don't you mean this song in your heart? It is a song of dedication. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And then we're going to pick up that prayer request that was sent in. Glory to Jesus. I surrender all to Him and freely
Thank you for sending in those prayer requests. I will ask our church to pray uh, with me tonight. And uh, Rodney wants prayer. Uh, the family is still sick. And their father, uh, we lift up the family again Sunday night. We pray. And uh, we pray right now for the Larry, for Ramesh. Uh, uh, we pray, dear Lord God, for Rodney. We pray for uh, his, uh, his, his wife, dear father, and two, his son. And all that is in that family, dear Lord, that is not well. We pray for healing in the name of Jesus. Praise God. We pray for Mary as well. I know she's having such a difficult, difficult time. It's been uh, several years of challenge, of issues, dear God. But I pray, Lord, that you would strengthen their faith and strengthen her faith, dear Lord. They will not become discouraged, but continue to trust in the Lord and declare healing now. Total healing, physically, emotionally, spiritually, for those families. I will lift up Brother Charles tomorrow. Dear Lord, is the date for his eye surgery. And we pray, dear Lord, that, that it will go well. He has been waiting, dear Father, in the name of Jesus, glory to God. And dear, dear Father, if that does not work out, then he may have to do it privately. We know it's a lot of money. But Lord, you said you're going to supply our every need, glory to God. So I pray, Father, amen. But most importantly, without uh, their Lord uh, uh, and surgery, you can heal. Because you are the greatest surgeon. We have seen miracles upon miracles, dear Lord. And Lord, should you choose to heal our brother one way or the other, yes. we just thank you for his healing. Uh, we lift up Sister Vera's request for a family in New York. And uh, we uh, pray, dear Lord, that the apartment they are living in their Lord Jesus that has been burned down and now they have to stay in a hotel. This is a tragedy for Sister Vera's family in New York. And uh, we pray, dear Lord, that you would provide for them. Thank you that they were saved uh, from, from the fire. It could have been really bad. But thank you for your protection, dear Lord. And I pray the things that are going to work out for that uh, apartment and everything they have found in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, guys, continue to lift up these prayer requests as much as you could remember it in, in our prayers tonight. We ask those of you on the line, if you could, uh, to join with us for the power hour. We are going to go to God and pray right now in the auditorium. We're going to be divided up in groups. Uh, and so you invite right in your home, wherever you are, to spend this time in prayer with us uh, as well. All right? And on Sunday morning coming, 9 a.m. Uh, would be our Sunday morning divine worship service. And so we are taking the opportunity to invite you and your family uh, to make sure that you come and join with us. It's a different experience, I tell you that. It's a different experience in the house. Amen. Praise God. It's like the woman with the issue of blood from 12 verse 9 5. She could have stayed home and receive her healing. No question about that. Amen. But there was something different about being in the presence uh, of Jesus Christ. He said, I want to be in that presence. I'm sick. I'm feeling I'm weak. But it was the last thing I do. I've got to be in his presence. Amen. I've got to reach out as close and even so close that I can touch the hem of his garment. God honored that kind of faith, my friend. Listen, if you are sick, you go with your pain to the doctor. Amen, somebody? Hallelujah. That's what you do. With your pain, you, you hire a vehicle. You, you, whatever you got to do. But you go to the doctor. You see, if you are sick, amen, not well, and you come with that faith in the house of God, if I come, and I've been praying for God to be well, don't you think God will honor that faith as well? Come on, somebody. Come on, let's trust in the Lord God. Sunday morning, be here. Amen. We are going people in the prayer line, and many people have been receiving answers to prayers and healings and so on. And then Sunday evening is a very special evening for us because we are having a family night here. A Sunday evening, a great family night, and we are celebrating that family night with a movie. All right, with a message in it, with a moving message in it. So we encourage you to come on this Sunday evening at 6 30 for that. Praise God. We will keep you uh, all informed 
of uh, the uh, summer uh, holidays, uh, all that has been planned, the vacation back to school, family day at the church, and all of that. Glory to God. Excited, excited. I bid you good night in the name of Jesus for those of you who are in line. Praise the Lord. Let's break up quickly.